You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. This episode is brought to you by Summer School Electronics. Summer School Electronics is a pedal company from Syracuse, New York, making incredible stuff. There are a few summer school devices knocking around the shred shed, and I can tell you from personal experience, they sound great, they hold up, and Mark is a super cool dude. The first pedal I saw from them was the Science Fair, which is a parallel classic drive and distortion. And now they've released a new parallel concept called the Class Reunion. The Class Reunion takes a 90s muff style circuit and combines it with their Trash Panda, which is like a soft clipping, high gain, amp in a box style circuit. And it is a super, super versatile combination with all kinds of clipping options, parallel blending. It's really, really rad, a really cool idea, and I think you should check it out. So go over to summerschoolelectronics.com, that's summerschoolelectronics.com, and check them out today. Shopify grows your business no matter how far or big you grow. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Yo, 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 what is up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. This week, I am talking to my friend, Robert Baker. Robert is an excellent dude. He has one of the biggest and best YouTube channels about guitar and music on the interwebs. You should already know him if you don't. I highly recommend looking him up. Go to the link in the show notes. The dude is fantastic. And he's been doing some really good interviews himself, which we discuss heavily on this episode. We got into his backstory several years ago when he first came on the podcast, and we were scheduling to do another one, and it kept falling through, and then I realized he had moved to Nashville, and I, conveniently, was going to be in Nashville for some more String Joy stuff, so we scheduled a time to hang out and podcast, and we ate some Indian food. It was a great time. Don't worry, we didn't eat on the podcast. I know how that can be. Yes, we we avoided that, but we did talk about food quite a bit. We also talked about the interviews he's been doing with absolute guitar legends. The dude is absolutely crushing it. I love talking to Robert. And if you want to get his whole story, you might want to go to the first episode he was on a few years back and check that out if you're not familiar with him already. And then jump into this one, because this is just like two dudes who are buddies, you know, kind of just picking up and going. So that's what this episode's about. I think you're really going to like it. And we did film it. So there will be a video version going up on the YouTubes as well. I will let y'all know on the social medias as soon as that is up and running. Go to the Tone Mob YouTube channel if you'd like to watch us talk about some of this stuff, because we do pick up some guitars and discuss them a little bit. So if that's your cup of tea, Go over there. There are more and more videos all the time being published over there. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this episode with my dude, Robert Baker. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Tone Mob Podcast, the show about guitar stuff occasionally, sometimes. I'm your host, Blake Wyland. With me today, I have... Mr. Robert Baker, but actually, he has me, because I'm at his place, which is a little different. You're mine. Yeah. I don't think he's going to let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> little does Blake know. I don't want to leave. That's what he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the plot has twisted. <laughs> yes, the thick plotons. Here we are. <laughs> 
So, yeah, Robert and I were going to do this uh, remotely like we normally do, and we had yeah. some stuff come up a couple times, and it was like, you know, I'm just going to be there. So yeah, you said you're gonna be in Nashville. So mm-hmm. I was like, do you just want to do it in person then? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when I'm not sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it worked out uh, kind of better in in every way, basically. Uh, got to show off my cool little fold out table. You got here. this cool table. Mm-hmm. You got this cool setup in here. But I'm like, wow, I'm such a messy, horrible pig. Uh, because this is so clean and nice and tidy and all like ready to go. He's like ready to go within, you know, 15 minutes. And here I'd, I'd be like, hold on. I got to find a cable. I let this, let, well, maybe it's under this stack of pedals. I don't know. Dang um, it, Bobby. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, maybe a little bit inspiring for me to get my act together back at the shred shed. Yeah. It's just, um, I mean, w- when I'm recording, like doing a video, mm-hmm. It's destroyed in here. Okay, It's just good. stuff everywhere. And then, um, like, usually at the end of the week, I'm more in the editing phase of a video. Right. So then I I, I have to put everything away and kind of get it back in its spot. And then I'm like, okay, I can function again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm real bad. I just leave it. And, <laughs> You're like, it's going to uh, end up here oh, anyway. Let me just scoot this out of the way. And then, in <laughs> like, I go in these horrible cycles that the listeners have heard me talk about before. Uh, where I go like six months without really cleaning up the shred. I clean it, I, like sweep up because I because it's outside, so I come in and out. Of right. It. I like, clean it, but I don't like tidy up my cables and I don't pick everything up. And it's like I get it gets to a point I'm like it's unworkable in here. This is I have to do it. And then I spend three days getting everything perfect, and I'm like I will never again that- let this happen to me. <laughs> six months <laughs> later, <laughs> oh, it's happened again. <laughs> Um, my um, my wife definitely inspired me because she's like a perfectionist, mm-hmm. and she wants like she's all about cable management. It needs to like look nice, all this kind of stuff. So then I'm like, okay, I'll take the time, and you know, there's there's still inevitably cables. There's going to be going to be, yeah, you know, but most of them are managed through stuff, and you don't see a lot of them. And even when I was doing the pet, little pedal board thing over there, I was mm-hmm. just like, all right cable management system underneath here and yeah yeah so now i'm like i enjoy it Mm -hmm. which is probably weird Uh, well i mean yeah i guess i've I've gotten to that point with certain things i'm like Mm. this used to be a chore but now i'm kind of into it yeah except changing strings that still sucks that's still horrible (laughs) (laughs) i guess it's probably worth noting uh in case anybody's you know new to the podcast which there's been some a little bit of influx lately uh we've recorded before so this is not a typical "tell me your story" episode because we already did that. So we, we know each other. We already did we that go way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to hear that story, search Robert Baker Tone Mob wherever you're listening to this, and I'm sure the first episode will pop up if you want to get that story. But the story that I don't have is last time you were not in Nashville. No, I was not. What made you make the transition? I just heard that it was really cool here. You heard correctly. Low temperatures oh, well, at all times, no humidity. Oh, that's and um, what you heard. they said they were looking for guitar players. So I was like, oh, there, I figured there'd be plenty down there. You and know, there's hardly any guitarists in this town. It, it was very surprising when yeah. I moved here. Yeah, short <laughs> supply. Yeah, so you can have any gig you want. Yeah, I was like, you know what? You know what Nashville needs. One more guitarist. One more, I'm, yeah. It's me. I'm the guy. <laughs> you are the guy. You are the guy. It, um, no, it was a lot of stuff. You know, it was um, the school that my son was going to w- was ending. Like, it only went up to sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And we were planning on transitioning him out of that school anyways. And um, just kind of the area we lived in was nice. And around it was kind of starting to get worse and creeping in. And we're like, eh, I think it's time to, like, move out of here. Mm-hmm. And um, I just one day... As, almost like, like as a joke to Gabby, I'm just like, we should move to Nashville. And she's like, yeah, why don't we? <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. And it was like, I mean, like six months later, we were here or something like that. Wow. Like, like it happened cr- fast. Crazy fast. And it was like the second we decided that we were going to move here, like there were so many signs that it was like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. The The guy who we were renting my old studio from, 
just randomly as I was paying him rent one one month, he's just like, yeah, I'm looking for a – I need to buy a house here in town because he wanted to run for mayor because he lived on outside. I'm like, you should just buy our house. And he's like, where do you guys live at? And I told him, and he's like, yeah, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> and All I'm right. Like, awesome. And then he had like a thing for the number seven. For some, like, it was like just one of the things. He's like, he loves – seven everything equals seven all this kind of stuff okay okay and our address was seven 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 so when, uh, when he pulled up and he he's like this is it this is it yep this this is the house and he did it was like right away he's just like hey you know let's let's do this and we're like oh okay sold like sold the house without even trying like never had to list it or anything i'm like man if, if that's not a sign that you know this was meant to meant to be and then mm-hmm. there were so many things after i thought about it, i'm like man I, I think i know more people in nashville than i know in ohio and I've lived, I've lived here my whole life it's starting to be that way almost for me too i'm like oh i need to every time i come here i come two or three times a year i'm like oh i need to see so and so oh i need to see so and so yeah and so oh and oh i miss and i go back home like i missed like 20 people mm-hmm. and i i it's it's strange i mean a lot of people have flocked here it, it's it didn't all happen at once, but it felt mm-hmm. like it kind of did. Like a lot of my friends that were in California ended up in Nashville, and then people yeah. just it it's become a hub even more than it already was. I feel like mm-hmm. in the last decade. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, just the, for one, the people you bump into just just go to the guitar stores. That's all yeah. you have to do. And <laughs> yeah, I, I'm it. telling you, you will run into everybody. Everybody, you know? and it's like the cool people that you like. Like, I'm a huge Bonamassa fan, you know, and I, I don't know Joe or anything like that, but mm-hmm. I was just like at Glazer's getting my guitar dropped off and they're like, oh, Joe's here. And I turn on and walks, but I'm like, wow, wow. Okay. And, and it's, and it's like that all the time. And I was just at Glazer's yesterday. Were you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. And that's not, not meant to be like name dropping. I don't know Joe at all. He just happened to, I'm like, that's just like, where else would this happen? Like, exactly. This, this is Nashville. Well, it was <laughs> weird. I, it was, I, this was like a, a little bit of a, well, not a little bit. Definitely a imposter syndrome type moment because mm-hmm. uh, Scott and I were there uh, just looking at the uh, Chiari guitars. They, and they, oh yeah, they were at the Nam Next thing that, which is why I'm in town. And they were like, "Come on, after to this thing." And I was like, I walked in. I was like, "Wait, I've been here before. Isn't this like? Wait, this is Glazer Shop and Sean Payton's here." And like, I'm like, "Wait yeah. a minute, I'd totally forgotten that I'd been there before." Yeah, they were house. Yeah. Well, and I mean. Glazers is like the coolest because who would ever expect it? Like, you you pull up, there's no sign, nope, nothing, nothing. Like, you, nothing. you, you just you have to know where it is. <laughs> and um, I mean, all of them, Aaron, Nick, Joe, mm-hmm. Josh. I mean, just the coolest. Clyde. I mean, all of them are just the coolest, coolest people in there. Yeah, yeah. It was it was the the imposter syndrome moment kicked in when Joe came over to talk to Scott and I. And he started asking us string questions. I'm mm-hmm. like, why is Joe Glazer asking me questions? It <laughs> shouldn't be a thing that happens. <laughs> this is really weird. I get it. Like, I understand it rationally, but it felt really strange. Because yeah. if you're a guitar nerd at all, you, you've heard his name before. Mm-hmm. He's like the tech in Nashville. I know there's a lot of them, incredible techs in Nashville, but he's probably the most well-known, I would guess, at this point. Yeah, I would say he's, I mean, he's world renowned yeah everyone talks i mean you have people bring in their 59 les pauls Mm -hmm. in there to be refretted yep you know and i mean not that joe does that stuff anymore but like nick does he's driving the ship yeah as we say you know who taught nick how to how to do it and do all this kind of stuff so it um I don't know that whole thing is cool and there's a there's a cool music store down there um that just opened up not too long ago What's it called? Music City Vintage. Did you happen oh, to go to it? No. It's right in that Berry Hill area. It's like mm-hmm. a road over from, okay. from Glazers. And um, they had so many cool... As soon as I walked in, they had an old Ibanez Destroyer. Nice. I saw it across the room. I'm like, is that a Destroyer? You're like, <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, and it had like a broken headstock and uh, you know switched pickups. And I'm like, ah, oh, man. And they still wanted a lot for it. But I was just like, my inner Eddie was just like... That's an Ibanez destroyer. Like, let me let me get that. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me let me saw it up and turn it into the shark guitar. Absolutely. <laughs> so I can hate it just like he did. 
but no, it was cool. I mean, they had tons of cool guitars, super nice, and um, I hadn't been in there yet. That was like a week or so ago that I went in there. So. How long has it been open? I thought I knew every shop in town, but apparently not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I heard of it because of a guy. Um, Do you watch JD Simo at all? Oh yeah, yeah, I love. Uh, oh yeah, I love JD. Yeah. I, I have a guitar stories video coming up with him oh and it's the dude. coolest he's the you're gonna coolest. you're gonna love that i he he was on the podcast several years ago and mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite episodes I yeah love that dude he's such a cool guy mm-hmm. cool player but um he was talking about it and i'm like where's the store at you know and i'm he's like oh, i was like lasers and i'm like oh i'll have to go in there sometime and mm-hmm. i remembered the other day when i was trying to kill some time and i'm like where's this store at so this is it's, such a Nashville conversation right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's whenever he, I come here and if I do a podcast with anybody from here, I, we just start talking about the town because it is literally my home away from home. Like I can drive not like an expert, but like I can like just go places here. Like yeah. not, not pull up my maps like, "Oh yeah, I know where that is." I'm just gonna, like weird. It's so weird to feel I feel very at home here. But, yeah. But at the same time when I go back home to Portland, I'm always like no, but this is where I belong, actually. You know, it's you think, it, it's you th- weird. You think you'll ever move here? I doubt it. You don't think so? I, I doubt it. It's I've made it work uh, this well for this long. I, I don't see it really happening. Mm-hmm. Um, it I, I Part of me wants to, but then the, the other part of me, like I said, I go back to Oregon. I'm like, nah, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is my spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just such an Oregon boy. Like, Are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of how I thought. When I would go back to Ohio, I would feel that way and stuff. And then I'm just like, no, man, I love Nashville. Like, so, so it's, it's weird how inviting the town has been. Yeah. Like, I thought for sure it'd be like, no. Get out of here. Yeah. Another guitar player. Like, we're good. You know? (laughs) We've got it handled. And it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you talk to them and they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Do you want to do a video? (laughs) (laughs) Hate to be that guy, but... Um, but all, I mean, how can you not the, the having access to just, just because of the proximity mm-hmm. makes it so much easier to do. I tell you, I, I'm kind of a night owl and you know, I watch a lot of your stuff, but when I saw the Vince Gill video pop up, I'm such a huge fan. I was like, I know what I'm doing this evening. Yeah. Like, I watched it like a couple times. I, it, yeah, I was like, this is the coolest thing that, I, w- yeah, that was one of the cool. And it took about six six or seven months mm-hmm. to get it ironed out. Cause Vince, you know, Vince would be free one week and he's like, Oh, I gotta go do this thing with the Eagles. And I'm like, yeah. The with Eagles. Who? Yeah. Like, you're doing, no. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But then he, he's like, yeah, I'm going to Europe and all this stuff. And then it finally like, he's like, yeah, man, just swing by on uh, Wednesday. You're like something. I'm there. I'm like, whatever plans let me check I had. My schedule. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Vince. Gill. Everything <laughs> is canceled. Yeah. <laughs> so that was super, super cool. Cause I mean, I've listened to Vince Gill my entire life. Yeah. I, I mean, like, that was, I remember when I was trying to get a telly, and my dad's like, all right, you got, there's one guy you got to listen to. It's mm-hmm. Vince Gill. And I remember watching this video, and funny enough, it was one of the first times I ever heard Brent Mason. There's a video of, they're playing, I can't remember the song, but Brent does, you know, the crazy intro and all this stuff, and then Vince does this wicked blue solo at the end of it. And I'm like, wow, what a tone. I mean, like mm-hmm. that. But then, um, you know, discovering Brett Mason. He's, yeah. He's one of my favorite. He's my favorite country guitarist of all time, but he's just one of my favorite guitarists of all time. Yeah. I'm like, Weirdly enough, like, obviously, I'd heard Brent Mason a million times mm-hmm. without realizing who I was hearing. Right. And that's probably goes for most people, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not at this point. I think at this point, he's pretty well known. But yeah, I, my first intro to him was through Wampler. And mm. well, at least my first intro to him in a knowing who he was capacity. Yeah. I heard Brian talking about it and I'm like, who's Brent Mason? You're always talking about him. He's like, you've heard him. Yeah. And, and, uh, yep. then I realized, oh yeah, I actually know all of his stuff practically. Yeah. I just didn't know I did. I mean the, the whole 90, I mean, he literally changed the way country music was like, yeah. he gave it the sound. I mean, it was like. That was all they wanted people to do was like if they couldn't get Brent, like then who can sound as close, close to Brent yeah. as possible? 
And um, I was actually trying to get uh, an episode with him while I was here, and you know, he was playing with some guy named Post Malone or something. <laughs> oh you know? yeah, yeah, you know, some that guy, guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah, probably doing pickup, man. Yeah. <laughs> they, He's like, um, oh, sorry, I'm doing it with Post Post Malone the week you're here. I'm like, that. I guess that's an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a total switch. So the next guitar stories that comes out sunday is with brent oh yes yeah so okay, it's well, and it's like an hour long i'm just like i'm just let the let the video roll i know what i'm doing on sunday yeah it's it was awesome because one of the coolest things with any of these people is they always hand you the guitar like their guitar like oh just play it for a second like yeah. after we turn the cameras off and stuff just play it. i'm like that's the cool like, like Vince, what? Was, Vince was like you just gotta really feel that neck here just play it for that you're <laughs> like, like ah, ah. <laughs> And then Brent did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, this is the telly that I've heard everything. All the Brooks and Dunn stuff. All Mm -hmm. the Alan Jackson. George All this stuff. I'm Mm -hmm. like, I've I've heard this telly since I was about probably seven or eight years old. Yeah. You know? Not just the model. The guitar that was on the recordings. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is wild. And, and, And none of them have been like easy to play like you, you think they would all have like super low action and all this stuff i'm like oh the action's high it's kind of hard to play and like interesting and they just tear it up on them they so, just go yeah yeah so yeah in, in vincent's episode uh, i don't know what i expected honestly but uh, for some reason like i picture him m- i think this is my dad's fault because my dad's always been like vince just seems like a guy i'd want to sit on the porch and play guitar with and uh-huh. so i always like pictured him on a porch for some r- random reason <laughs> but when he was in like his guitar room i was like oh that's that's life goals right there that's so, beautiful so his room was was so cool because he was like do you want to know how bad i have like the guitar disease like how bad it is <laughs> and he's like he's like look at the walls in here and i'm like what about him he's like you know what that is and i'm like it looks like tweed he's like because it is tweed. Because it the is whole tweed. The studio is lined with tweed. That's amazing. And then the ceiling was like the mesh from an amp. Oh, and are you serious? That's crazy. Yeah, it, like his whole like you didn't get to see the ceiling in the, in the video, but I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it again. Look, more views. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, um, it was. I was like, that's the most like guitar nerdy thing ever, I and love I that. love it. Yeah, I, he was just like. He's like, there's just no help. I'm too far gone. No, why bother? It's it's worked for him this long. Yeah. Why bother? It's like Joe Bonamassa. Um, have you ever watched? It's I think it's one of his more recent, like Welcome to Nerdville mm-hmm. videos. I, I haven't seen a recent one, but I've definitely watched them. I think it came out a few months ago. Yeah. So recent, you know. Yeah. And um, his cabinets in his house, like his kitchen cabinets, are mm-hmm. all Karina. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I love it. Yes. He's like, I thought it looked good, and you know. It's, guitar yeah so. so why not right? yeah i couldn't have afforded the cabinets without the guitar yeah so it goes to you know why not right uh, i'm like yes i love that like that's like the next level like i'm not there yet but one day one day one day i'll be there yeah one day i mean yeah it's i it's weird how it almost is like a there's a million things you could do for a living mm-hmm. and, and somehow in, and it was just I've been talking with this about this all weekend. Like somehow this town in particular, just everybody's so passionate about it. Everybody's so excited about it, and I feel like that's part of the magnetism of it. Like mm-hmm. if you're not really into music, you probably like in the, especially in the last decade or so, you probably like, yeah. aren't moving here most likely. Yeah, and and I will say, you know, I, I love guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, super obsessed with it have been you know for 15 16 years however long it's been you get around some of the guys here and you realize like oh this is a whole nother level like it's i I thought i liked guitar Mm -hmm. you know i I don't compared to these (laughs) like like, it's crazy like they'll you know be in a session 12 hours and go home and play more guitar because like i really want to work on this one thing you know i'm like yeah that's i'd be done with guitar for the day Mm -hmm. and and they are just like they literally just eat, sleep, and breathe music and guitar, and I'm like, that's it's inspiring to see. But mm-hmm. I'm like, it, it puts it in perspective. I'm like, I don't know jack about guitar yeah. compared to these guys. Like, well, and just the obsession that people can get to with music in general. Mm-hmm. I just uh, did an episode with Travis from Coheed and Cambria, and oh wow, it was awesome. And yeah, we really hit it off. It was fantastic. Uh, but 
I would think that somebody like that who's been in a successful band for as long as he has would mm-hmm. get cuz like even I find myself I'm like I love all this so much but I'm in it every day all day. Yeah. I just want to read a comic book or watch a movie sometimes mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And he's like, "Yeah, me too, but I'll wa- I'll be re- reading a book about music." Like yeah. about the history of a band or something. And I'm like, "I will do that too, but that guy, he's he's like that. Mm-hmm. He's obsessed not necessarily with guitar in particular he loves guitar obviously but just music like everything that he absorbs for entertainment is music related in some way and everything he gets excited about for the i mean obviously he does other things too but the way he was kind of describing it was he breathes it you know and like you said i feel like i do but then there's levels to this yeah you get around some of those guys i mean my wife always makes fun of me because she's like are you aren't you just sick of guitar because if i'm not I, I still play guitar practice every day and all that kind of stuff but it um i'm usually watching i will say i usually watch guitar videos mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like I, I don't watch any anything else really mm-hmm. and she's like how do you like are you not sick of this like i'm like sick of what she's like well you were just playing guitar and now you're watching you know doug rapaport demo mm-hmm. an amp or something i'm like yeah what about, and she's like, and then you're gonna go watch some pod, you know, podcast about guitar right. and like all this. Kind of, I'm like, I guess that's true. Yeah. And then, until football season rolls around. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that's something. Yeah, I've uh, never really gotten into. I've tried. The, Just sports in general or, or football. It's weird because like I have sports. Like I'm very like kind of nichey with sports. Like mm. I'm not into basketball, but nostalgia dictates that I'm a Portland Trailblazers fan. Oh. You know, t- t- things like that. Like, I think that I'm not into it, but then I'll catch myself like, mm-hmm. what's going on with the team? But, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not paying super close attention, especially right now. It's it's abysmal over there. Yeah. Um, but uh, it it's... Uh, it's I'm fans. Of, it's almost like I'm a fan of the brand of the team more than I am actually the team. The team? Which seems like a poser move, but <laughs> you poser. But I can't help it. I grew up with my family like watching it, so I love mm. Blazers memorabilia and like things. But I don't keep up with the teams. Really. What's going on with the team? And I never. I liked playing basketball as a kid, but I'm obviously not super built for it. And uh, <laughs> you're not seven foot tall. No, no it's weird. <laughs> I barely come up to your knees. Um, it's a. I've always been more of an, into like individual sports for myself. Mm-hmm. So like you know things like I've always been interested in boxing and you know powerlifting and things like that. They're just oh, more like cool too, focused on that kind of stuff. I don't mm-hmm. know why. It's just something about putting it all on one person or yourself that is just somewhat more interesting to me. Yeah. Which obviously isn't the case because neither of those are the most well. Boxing's pretty popular, but it seems like it's losing ground to MMA a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, I've always the only Ohio team I don't like are the Cavs, and yeah. then that's I'm like I've been like since I was a kid, diehard Laker, Kobe, mm. Kobe guy mm-hmm. my whole life, and then uh, Indians and huge. Cleveland Browns fan. Huge. Yeah. Huge Cleveland Browns fan. Is that so. something that started as a kid or Yeah, I mean I liked the Browns even whenever they left and we didn't even have a team. I, I just had no team as right? a kid because they, you know, there were no Cleveland Browns for a couple years. Oh, okay. And, and then our arch nemesis, the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> Except for Flacco, you're cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird disconnect I have with uh, like a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends are way more into it, and mm-hmm. they're just like talking about sports. And I'm just like in my brain, I'm like, da 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 da. Like yeah, uh, like often like I don't want to be a jerk, but I like man, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just I could not care any less about this. Like you know how I'm talking about like different style of Fred ends. Yeah, that's what that's how I feel right now. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's a. It's an interesting thing, but I'm, I'm I'm really excited to like come in here. The I know this isn't to the same level of your old studio that you had, but mm-hmm. you've you've really got it dialed in here, and you've got a fantastic array of uh, guitars and amps. Like, oh, thanks, man! It's really 
it's very very nice. I love very aesthetically pleasing just to look around. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, this house we were talking before we're renting, so it's limited what I can, you know, do to the walls and and sure. all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, once we buy a house, then it'll kind of be like, all right, rip here we everything go. Out. Do you think you'll keep it in the house, or will you go? I know you talked about trying to get some more property. Do you think you'll try to build something? Or? Yeah, that's the idea is mm-hmm. to build. I I really liked. The, the studio we had before this one, which was completely, it was a little bit too far away from the house. I mean, it was like a 10 minute drive. It wasn't that far, sure. but it was still far enough to where you're like, eh, I don't really feel like going, you know, going into the office today or yeah. something like that. <laughs> Got to drive all the way to work on a Saturday. Yeah. All the way to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, I mean, it was a huge, it was either 1200 square feet or 1500 square feet. I can't remember. It was big, wow. you know, and it had a full basement and everything and. Um, is great because everything's cheap in Ohio. Nice, so yeah. Here, something like that would be, you know, like ten thousand dollars a month. Like not exaggerating. Yeah, no, it, yeah. like I'm like okay, so obviously I won't be renting any kind of, you know, studio in Nashville. Right. And um, I've kind of liked actually downsizing everything mm-hmm. and just having like a normal like home studio again. Yeah. It. I don't, it just it does everything. Mm-hmm. All I do is play guitar, so I'm, it's not like I need like a drum room and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like I've I've found a by accident. I think I've found like kind of the sweet spot for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about three. I think it's like three hundred and five square feet if you count like the closet ish. Which is area. A good. Yeah. Good guitar space. Yeah. It's it's I can put a lot of stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um. I but not not too much stuff you know i've thought like well maybe i'll expand it out the front a little ways and then i'm like you're getting it's insane. dangerous stop it it's stop dangerous. it yeah. <laughs> like don't but don't it, step away it does feel like kind of a sweet spot though mm-hmm. it's like that's pretty big but it's not so crazy that it's hard to manage I right mean, despite it's i guess should say any more difficult for me to manage than mm-hmm. than my chaotic tendencies are already leaning towards so right um i like that and when i was planning on we I think we we talked about this off the air too. We I was planning for a little bit. I was maybe gonna uh, buy some property and build another spot, but kind of holding off on that for now. But I was like, oh, I could I could double the space. I could like. I was like, should I though, or are you just gonna fill it up with empty boxes and dumb things that you shouldn't be keeping? Like, yeah, I don't know. That that was like I said. That was the thing. The uh, other studio was so much more than what we needed. Like we had a whole like seating area and all this kind of, I'm like never used it. Right. Like never used half the space. Did you like, record bands? Cause that's a big place. Did you record bands or projects in there outside of the YouTube stuff? No. And, and like I said, what was crazy was like I said, we had the full basement, mm-hmm. which is also 1200 square feet uh, under the studio. And someone had already drilled holes through the floor. So I'm like, Oh, I could like put amp cabinets down there yeah. and run cables and, and do all this kind of stuff, and I was just like, just didn't need to. No, mm-hmm. you know. And then I think we were there for two years, two almost two and a half years. Mm-hmm. So it was awesome to have all the space and everything. But like I said, a lot of times I just come up here and I'm like, I don't know, it's, it's big enough. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, and so. I think a lot of that too is, um, you know, the the again things we were talking about off the air, but the technology. Now, I mean, I thought I was going to be mm-hmm. ca- the reason I built that place. It's it's fairly well. It's as isolated as I could afford to make it. Basically, mm-hmm. it's like two layers of five eighths drywall. You know, room within a room type of thing. All right. that jazz. And I did that because at the time, I thought I was like, if I want to get the sounds I want, I have to play at least moderately loud amps. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm gonna mic them and all that. And I did for a long time. That's how I recorded, but. Well, like the tube amp expander and the aux and things like yeah. that. It's like I don't, I don't need to, and it sounds just as good. And I'm still playing the amps that I like, the yeah. actual amps. So the technology. I mean, I never dreamed I would be playing direct in as much as I do now, like all the time. Yeah. Well, I think I've like regressed. I just turned more into a caveman because I was, I, you know, I used the Ax Effects for probably eight years Mm -hmm. and that was it i was just like i don't know it's easy i still like to use it when i record like courses and stuff like that just because the amps put out so much heat and it's it's already like warmer yeah and here two dudes two dudes and light and you know the 
obnoxious lava lamp and <laughs> just radiating <laughs> heat over there. But I mean, you get a couple of the amps turned on and it is just a sauna mm -hmm. in here. But I've gotten to where like, I love using the amps and stuff. You yeah. know, it's fun. It's fun because they're, they're kind of like ugly almost. What do you mean? They're like, they're hot and they are all noisy and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. That camera turned off. I just realized. Uh oh, no space on memory slot one. Oh, should we pause? Yes. Okay. Pausing people. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Vince, and I'm here to talk about the Maris Mercury X. My dad's always going on and on about how cool Maris is. He really went off on one about the Mercury X the other day. He said something about a 4,800 hertz sample rate and 99 preset locations in 33 banks and something along the lines of the most advanced reverb pedal ever devised by man? That's all true, but I only care about one thing. This pedal sounds sick. So make sure you check out the Mercury X and all the other fine products at maris.us, as well as fine retailers worldwide. All right, Dad, all now right. can I have my pocky? How exactly do artists get their music on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, all these services? How in the world do you get your music there? Well, in the past, you had to use something called a record label. But these days, you can use DistroKid. DistroKid is the absolute easiest way to get your music up on streaming services. And it's the most affordable way to do so. Not only do plans start at $22.99 for the entire year, that's less than two bucks a month, DistroKid also does not take a cut of your streaming revenue, unlike some other services out there. Even better if you sign up by going to ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. That's ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. One more time, that's ToneMob.com slash DistroKid. You'll get 30% off. That's right, 30% off. They're already extremely reasonable prices. So go to ToneMob.com slash DistroKid and get your music out there. We are brought to you today by Sweetwater, specifically the Gear Exchange. You may have heard about this. This is a place where you can go to buy and sell your used gear. Maybe you got a pedal over there that's just kind of collecting dust. Maybe there's something you've been eyeing from the Sweetwater catalog. Well, right now is a great time to turn that unused gear into something you're actually going to use. Even better, if you sell on the Gear Exchange, you can keep 100% of the sale as long as you choose a Sweetwater gift card as your payout method. That is not too shabby, because let's be honest, most of this buying and selling we do is just to fund new gear purchases, and that is a great way to reach a wide variety of customers and keep 100% in your pocket, or rather, on your pedal board. So go check out the Sweetwater Gear Exchange and turn that unused gear into something that's actually going to help you write that next huge riff. Okay. 220? Is that, or excuse me. 220. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going like back in time? Yeah. Or? We're going back in time. <laughs> we're, we're back. Okay. In time. I, I did the math wrong, but I think we're actually going to time travel. Yes. Yes. Anyway, we're back, people. Uh, sorry about that. We, we are, w the content was so good, it filled the hard drive. It couldn't handle it. It couldn't handle it. It didn't know what to do. It, it was just like so much, I mean, we're just writing gold it is just, over here. Yeah, we're not at all just blabbering on endlessly, <laughs> just with whatever comes to mind. Enjoy editing this. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> You're, like, You're so silly. <laughs> funny guy. Yeah, Edit. <laughs> If by edit you mean cut out the intermission and throw the rest of it into the, the <laughs> leave, internet. Leave it all in there, the 10 minutes of me like trying to figure out why the camera stopped. And, and, and us going, manamana. Da, 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 da. Manamana. Yeah, it was good stuff. Good stuff. So you, you mentioned you've got the upcoming Brent Mason. Do you have any other uh, interviews coming up that you 
can talk about or want to want to kind of prep yeah. people for? So I have the one with JD Sign. So these are, I already have that one shot. Yep. With JD, um, she was awesome. I have one shot with uh, Sean Tubbs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And then um, supposed that again, it's I think it's going to be one of those that just the planets have to line a little bit more. But supposed to do one with Joe Bonamassa. Yeah. That's um, killer. Yeah, which will be really cool. Mm-hmm. So, and then... And he um, splits time... Yeah, because he's got the East and West Nerdvilles, right? He's, well, he, and he's got one in New York, too. So oh, that's he's, right. He's I forgot. Got three of them. Oh, man. And then... And I was worried about building an extra 100 square feet on yeah. the thread shed. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've only talked to him through Instagram. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's it just takes time. It's to, one of those things. Yeah, I mean, that's my mm-hmm. life. It's like, yeah, message people, talk to their managers, whatever. Like, yep. Yeah. Have you, did you have to go through managers for any of these people or do you able to just get a hold? No, I was, you know, luckily I, I was friends with people they were friends with. Ah. And they helps. just reached out to them and they were just like, oh, this guy's doing these guitar videos and he mentioned he wanted to do one about your 53 telly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Swing well, by. And of course. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. You get to talk about guitars more? Yay. Yeah. 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 So that one was cool. And then um, one of them, which is another kind of like guitar hero of mine who I've talked with a little bit about doing it. And again, apologize. It sounds so name droppy, like naming all these people. I get it. I Well, I asked for it. It's Yeah. It's, I asked. it's not the inten- like, intention because I, I don't care about doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, but Dan Huff, yeah. I've talked to him a few times, which mm-hmm. to me, Brent Mason, Dan Huff. I mean, those two alone, then you can get into Tim Pierce and Lukather and Landau, mm-hmm. like all this kind of stuff. But, um, I mean, I just love Dan Huff's playing. Yeah, so incredible. So much, especially his giant, like stuff he did in Giant. Mm-hmm. Man, those first three albums, ugh, it's, so, so good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird, and I, it even, I know what you mean about like trying not to name drop, because sometimes it really sounds like that's what I'm doing, and I'm like, it's not the intent. No, yeah. no, that's just what I mean. I'm just lucky that that's what that's. I talk for a job, so mm-hmm. like I have to talk to somebody, and uh, oftentimes it's cool people, you know, or people that uh, fortunately because I'm constantly trying to chase down people. It sounds mm-hmm. that sounds weird too, but I am. <laughs> I call it like I see it. Yeah, I, I can't. I it's. <laughs> I'm always like emailing managers or dming people or whatever because yeah you know a lot of these people are super busy and they don't have time and that's totally cool mm-hmm. but also the you know the worst thing i can say is i don't have time right now and then i'm like yeah that's fine that's cool like yeah i, I get it i always tell them i go as long as you're okay with me bugging you like, you're not bugging me you know mm-hmm. just keep at it eventually it'll line up and like i mean that's the way it happened with vince you know yeah. it took six seven months and mm-hmm. um i was working with huff before that and you know and still and he's like ah you know i've just got too many projects going on right now and yeah I'm just kind of like, it just is what it is but. And, and i totally understand that too because mm-hmm. like i got too many projects going on right now like right. i have things i gotta focus on i have to get the episodes out once a week that's what i do but like i have to i have to turn stuff down now sometimes or at least say not right now mm-hmm. and i feel kind of bad like i don't want to do that because everybody's been so gracious with their time f- including right. yourself like to like do this with me i need to i actually need to do this like i <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and you don't you know necessarily so well i mean <laughs> so i appreciate it very much yeah and absolutely, and man. so i always feel really bad when i have to be like oh i can't do that right now mm-hmm. which is it's not all the time but it does happen and it feels weird i i try not to i try to say yes to as much stuff as possible because i like doing yeah. it and people do it for me yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I totally get where you're coming from, mm-hmm. too, because it, it is hard to say yes to, you know, everyone, because mm-hmm. there's always some... It's 24 hours in the day. Yeah, yeah. and it's just kind of like... And I like to sleep. Yeah. Actually, I <laughs> I like I don't sleep at all, so... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I'm stealing some of it. Hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> I um I go to bed at, like, 2 or 3, and then I'm up by, like, 7, and I'm like, all right, Whoa, let's go. Really? Oh, yeah. And you're, like, good at that point? Yeah, like, I don't need caffeine or anything. I just wake up, and I am How? good. No co- no coffee. I don't drink coffee. I or... need sleep so bad. I'm so, so, so bad. Like, I'll, I go to bed, like, two's late for me, but, like, usually around 12, 31. Mm-hmm. And if I'm up before 8, 30, it's bad. 
it's not good. It's, oh, uh, man. Yeah, and then sometimes I take a, a short nap, like 20 minutes. <laughs> like, i got to schedule my nap in for the day. It's usually quick. like when like my wife goes to pick up the kids, and she's like sometimes like, oh, we're going to go to grandma's for a little bit. I'm like, oh, are you? <laughs> Click 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 yeah. click 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 in the recliner. Yeah, and then and and but it's literally like tw- twenty minute power nap, and I will be a brand new man. Really? Yeah, and I wake up I'm like ha, go to the gym or something. I, I yeah. don't I don't power nap. I like if I go to sleep during the day, like I always say, like I go into like a food coma. Like if we go out to eat or something, mm-hmm. it's like three hours. Like oh I, yeah, I have to set an is, alarm. Yeah, yeah, there there is no like quick little like <laughs> little nap, but typically. I, mean, I think last night I went to bed at two something and then I was up by six, I think, yeah. doing stuff. That's, so. I mean, people are built different. Like, I that would be, I would be a train wreck and mad. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so upset. I would just be upset at, at everything. everything. Like, I love you. Shut up. Um, <laughs> you don't even know what all this. Yeah, you don't love me. <laughs> you couldn't possibly love me. Not in this state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's and then my, my wife makes fun of me. She's like, "You're such a baby." I'm like, "I know, but at least I know it." Yeah, and I know what I need. Oh, I need eight hours of sleep. Is what I need. My wife mm-hmm. needs sleep. She like by ten o'clock, she's like, "I can't stay awake. I have to go to bed now." <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, I'm just gaming with the bull." All right, right here we I, go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I uh, it, it, my my I also take a long time to wake up, which is annoying. Do you? It's really annoying Mm -hmm. uh, to me too, because I'm like, come on, yeah, like, come on, uh, like, like, uh, come on. And my wife wakes up. She's like, hey, hello, what, ready to go? Yeah, okay, that's the way I am. And Uh, mm -hmm. Gabby and Mason Mm -hmm. hate it because the second I'm awake, they're like, how do you just like you spring into it? I'm like, I'm awake. Let's go. You know? Yeah, I wish they get so annoyed. They're like, no. 30 minutes before minimum the, yeah yeah 45 is what i say like, leave us alone 45 for 30 minutes, minutes. <laughs> let me yeah my family would be asking me questions i'm like i don't know seven and a half like yeah i don't know like what's going on right now but yeah that's funny yeah yeah wow yeah it's a weird it's a weird way to be but at least i've like i said at least i've figured it out Mm-hmm. It, it, some people I've realized they don't figure it out. I'm like, you know, you need some sleep. Yeah, <laughs> you have to sleep at some time. Yeah, you're at some point. I I, had a, I, had a, I will call him an acquaintance back in the day who's like, I don't drink water. I live off Mountain Dew and Red Bull, and I don't require Oof. any sleep. I'm like, I bet you do. And yeah, he had yeah. some kidney issues. I'm so, sure you're very surprised to hear that. Yeah, but. man, that's that's all I drink is water. <laughs> I'm like. You have water. I have, I, I, I'll, I have some beer once in a while, but yeah, water, and uh, that's pretty much it. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Occasional, I, drink... I have coffee when I come to Nashville. I do don't you? usually have coffee. Where do you go? Do you go to... Um, I love Barista whis- Parlor. Whiskey co- oh, okay. Yeah. Down there, mm-hmm. if you go like uh, Five Daughters and... I haven't been there. I'm just so... I'm so into uh, Barista Parlors. They always have like an Ethiopian in mm-hmm. there, and it's always... Coffee. That sounded weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, there's a lot here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. No, they, they always have like an Ethiopian sourced coffee and I love mm-hmm. it. And I just can't seem to find that. Even in Portland, like it's coffee central. I'm sure I'm just not looking hard enough. But yeah, I always go to Brewster Parlor when I come here. Do, yeah, they have something there called, I think it's whiskey coffee. I can't remember. Derek from Rev. Mm-hmm. Always would get it. I, I don't think there's actually whiskey in it. No, it's just a Maybe flavor. there is. Maybe maybe it's also good. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, Derek is, De- loves his whiskey <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Derek from Rev Eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he would... I, like, the first time I ever came to Nashville, I remember he, like, got the whiskey coffee and then Five Daughters Donuts is, like, mm-hmm. a bakery. If you haven't... Like, you haven't been there? I haven't. Man. That's... Gotta fix that? You need you need that in your life. I don't have a major sweet tooth. I, I, you know, when people are like, I want some, some donuts or, and don't get me wrong. I like it, mm-hmm. but I'm always like, yeah, but what if I had it's another steak. breakfast burrito <laughs> <laughs> instead? I'm it's, that way. Like mm-hmm. both, and I just keep talking about Gabby Mason. They are like, they eat dessert first and then they eat their food Interesting. or they'll only eat dessert. I'm like, what? I want real food. Yeah. Give me steak. Yeah. I uh-huh. want steak. I mm-hmm. want a burger. Mm-hmm. I want, and like. And then give me like a Swedish fish, like one at the end. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, that's it. Like I don't, like, I don't need any more. I'm good. Like, um, except cake. I love me some cake. Do you like cake? I like a cheesecake. 
Oh, I like cheesecake, you know, like, too. Especially one that's, like, not frosted or anything. Just, like, mm. good old, maybe some berry. Like a like a tart berry, something. I love cheesecake, but yeah, normally normally, just more of whatever the main course was was would be my dessert. Yeah, choice. yeah. Nope, I'm that way too. Except if you go to Cheesecake Factory, the classic bisque cheesecake. I can't remember what it is, but it is. Mm, I don't know. Incredible. I haven't been to Cheesecake Factory in a while. I'm not gonna Re- lie. Yeah. It's been a long time. We love Cheesecake Factory. And there's like, (laughs) well, there's none of them actually around us. You have to go all the way to Opry Mills um, or Franklin. But Mm -hmm. yeah, that is, that's one of our go-tos. Everyone's like, would you go to Cheesecake Factory? There's so many like better places (laughs) around here. I'm like, dude, I'm a simple Ohio boy. Like, give me some Cheesecake Factory and I'm good. (laughs) So... In theory, this is a guitar show, and we have talked about guitars a fair bit, but more in the general sense of the term. Mm -hmm. Out of this arsenal that we are sitting around, do you have one right now that's like, I keep playing this one? I keep keep grabbing this one first. Yeah, there's kind of three of them. Well, I guess really two. Um, Have you played any of the American Vintage 2? Tellies? Yes, it's been a little while, but yes. That the green one. uh, Should I grab them? Grab it. Yeah, we actually have cameras for this one. Let's (laughs) let's do it. Yeah. This one, as soon as I got it, and this was just a, I think Fin, the guys at Fender here in Nashville had this. It was like a showroom, so it was it was kind of like it had been dinged up or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just gonna do that anyway. Really? I'm gonna ding it up. Yeah. yeah. And um, then I got it. I'm like, this is like one of the best tellies I think Fender has made in a long time. I mean, nice. Maybe not custom shop or something like that but Mm -hmm. i was blown away by this and then i got super glue on it and (laughs) and i took it into glaciers and i'm like nick he's like what i'm like i'm really stupid and my switch tip kept falling off so i put super glue on it Uh but then i laid the guitar down like this and 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 it ruined the switch (sighs) and the volume knob it ruined the switch too yeah because the glue ran down in there and it, it, this wouldn't turn and it was the liquid like the real wet super uh-huh. glue so it just dried immediately went down the body and you can see the paint starting to I see peel off of it and he's just like please just don't put super glue on stuff anymore <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like okay okay and then um, what do they recommend for a, 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 a honestly I probably would have considered that too because like i don't want to do like jb weld or something on it but like yeah well i think he was like just get a new switch that what fits. that's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like we have cases of them in here like i will give you one please don't put super glue on yourself again um and i had a bender put in it oh i'm i'm talking to him about it are I, you it's so cool i ha- i i don't i've never played a bender oh well after we do this oh, okay we're gonna, play well, a we're gonna do it Oh, that's so fun. It's cool. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And then I sanded all the... You can see how much lacquer there was on the neck. Mm-hmm. And then I sanded it all off and put gun gun stock oil? I can't remember what oh, it yeah? I have mm-hmm. it in there. Or in tongue the, oil or something? Tongue oil or something. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Tongue oil. Yeah, yeah. And um, it just made it that... Because like, the neck is just awesome on it. Oh, man. I mean, it's not, in this. it's not Ooh. light, but it's not... not that's not bad. bad. No. Even with the bender in it, that's got to add some weight, right? So mm-hmm. that's not bad, actually. I, I think so. Yeah. Well, that neck feels good. Yeah, and I did a video. They <laughs> let me record installing the bender and everything. It was really cool. I mean, it's it's so much work. If you haven't seen how they put in a bender, like I have. It, yeah, it's Aaron, insane. Yeah, Aaron, it's, we were there for hours recording all this stuff. Well, tell the folks about it. Like, how do the how does it go in? The Roughly. Ben- uh, so, like, um, if you see some benders, it's like the whole back is routed out and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And the gla- the reason why I wanted the glazer one. Is it just goes in? Which I'm not gonna hit the computer right here. Yeah. And they, it's basically a huge drill bit, and it drills all the way through your guitar. That's amazing. On the inside, so like you know you can't really see it. Yeah. And then in your neck plate, they route out a spot too where this goes in there, mm-hmm. and it's just a cable that wow. runs through your guitar, and then it's attached. They have to put a new saddle in here. Sure. And all it does is like, it's it's so unimpressive when you see what it does because it's all of that just to move. That one, right. one little thing you one can't see string. in the video. But I'm like, all that work just for it to do that. And, <laughs> and like, but then like the actual design of it is impressive. It's like super, super cool the way that 
Joe fine tunes. Like, in the video, we go through all like Joe shows us like the first one he ever made mm-hmm. and the progress or like, you know how it went from like, it's like well then I realized that this was a problem and this was a you know mm-hmm. and I'm like you're just so smart Joe Glazer yeah <laughs> and it's and it's so funny because it's like such a specific thing like well it was originally intended to mimic pedal steel and it's like such a random yeah. thing that. That is so. It would seem like so nichey that like, is it really worth all this effort? But and it, it it's just <sighs> yeah, it's so cool. Uh, it's so good. Oh man, I love it. Yeah. So this one's been kind of like a a mainstay since I got it. I mean, I got it when those come out two two years, three ago? years ago, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. It and I ended up. I'll tell you the truth. I liked this one so much. I had an old 58 Esquire, mm-hmm. which was awesome. I remember it. Wicked guitar, got rid of it, sold it. Really? Um, because I liked this one so much. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm not, I don't even play the Esquire. You're just sitting? Yeah, because I play this one so much. Mm-hmm. And then um, I took that and I bought the Firebird. Yeah. Behind me here. That thing's gorgeous. Yeah. So it's, this is a 63. And it. Um, it's so it's so wiry and twangy uh-huh. sounding when it's plugged in yeah. to an amp. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. For right now, it just sounds like an unplugged electric. <laughs> they all sound so similar. It's yeah. All the, what do you mean the tone sounds different? What yeah, do you mean, yeah. But um, the thing is beautiful. Yeah, I love that thing. It's mm-hmm. you know, fire. If anyone out there hasn't played a Firebird, try just try one. And it's like super weird mm-hmm. and awkward, and that's what I like about it because yeah. it's like. You don't need another telly if you've already got five of them. You don't need another Les Paul if you've got five of them. Mm-hmm. Like, get something different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Same with the Explorer over there, mm-hmm. which that one's having some issues. So, I, uh, I, not super recently, but like within the last year, I got a, a Thunderbird bass. Ooh. And, uh, it's an Orville one, but I, I saw it at a shop in Portland, Parrot Dice Guitars, and, uh, I was just like, ooh, that thing looks cool. And mm-hmm. I picked it up and I was like, hmm, mine. <laughs> thank you thank you and every time i play it i'm like look at this giant piece of wood it's so huge and it's, awesome like yeah and it made me but it made me want a firebird like mm-hmm. i know they're not the same thing but kind of well i mean yeah yeah, yeah i mean basically mm-hmm. they um yeah firebirds are cool yeah. i mean um i had so I've, I've went through three different firebirds i had a 2017 normal whatever it was called. I can't remember what it was called. And then I had the Murphy Lab, yeah, which I just recently sold and then got a 335 mm-hmm. with it. And then I got that one. And I'm like, oh, and they were, they're all great. It's just that one was, I'm like, no, no, this one has the mojo yeah. in it. Does uh, the, if I'm, I'm trying to remember if I'm remembering this correctly, Firebird pickups are different than mini humbuckers. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're not mini humbuckers. I, I can't remember even what the difference is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are different. <laughs> Just trust me. <laughs> Robert said they're different. Yeah, so I have to. I have to believe him. Well, I, it's kind of like Jazz Masters. You know, like people call them P90s, and it's like, well, they're not actually P90s, right? And they, they do a whole lot more than. A, yeah, they don't sound like it either. That was, no, I use, but I get it. Like when I first learned about Jazz Masters, I was like, are those P90s? P90s? Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And in the, uh, from my understanding, in, in the, like, Squire J. Mascus, they are, mm-hmm. or something very similar to it. So, yep, yeah, which is, which are great. I actually really like those guitars, but yeah. they're not quite a jazz master, if that's what you're really looking for. No, I think if you want a jazz master, you just got to commit, mm-hmm. you know, get the, the weird blend switches that you'll never use. Oh, I use them. Do you use them? I use them, yeah. You're the guy. I'm the guy. You're the one. <laughs> it's you. They're so good for, like, droney fuzz stuff. Oh. Like you, like you back it off there. I mean, yeah, you could kind of get similar results from rolling back the tone control on the normal circuit, but yeah, but I love the rhythm circuit with a fuzz and like just like it just drones on in this weird That's way. That's cool. Well, yeah. I guess because do they only have one tone? Tone knob is like a master yeah. tone. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess I could see the use then. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to have where you switch between the two. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and that was, I think, the original intention behind it. But a lot of people Leo just Fender's tape so it, smart. tape it down, and they're like, Yeah. Nah. <laughs> That's what I don't, I'm like, I don't want that thing. <laughs> but speaking of the jazz master, the bender reminded me of something that I was thinking about bringing up. And then we kind of switched gears. But since mm-hmm. we're back to it, 
Have you seen the Halon guitar parts? That he, I think he's in he's in Europe. So I think he's in Greece. If I can't I can't remember for <laughs> don't quote me on that. But he's in Europe for sure. Yeah. Um, he has a offset trim design that is so clever. I really want to try one like a long term. I tried it at Nam, but I want to try mm-hmm. it like on. I'm gonna probably order one here pretty soon. Uh, th- you can take any string and hardtail it, or put it on the the trim and have kind of a palm bender situation oh so yeah. like you could have like all the strings except for the b hard tell yep exactly and then you'd hit the bar and it only bends uh-huh. wow and it's super easy it's not hard to do if you look at the design of the trim it just like you just bring it down to a, a hard tail slot instead yeah or you bring it all the way through That's and so i didn't know this until after the fact but i guess he was inspired by something that ryan burke said somewhere and it was like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a way you could do this? Do and this? he was like, I think there is a way you could do this. <laughs> and like, Actually. Yeah. And I, I tried it, it on a guitar that um, uh, Ty over at Shock the Fox built. And he had it at NAMM. And it was like, this is a great idea. How, and so yeah. fun. I'm just, I'm just thinking of like how cool it would be to play chords and have notes that are stationary. Yeah. And then notes that have the trim in them. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it again. It's like it's not confusing. You just look at it and you know how to do it. Yeah, it's just like oh, drag that down to the slot. Like when, when you don't even have to do. You don't have to mod your guitar That's really. Smart. Even if you had a jazz master, you just wanted to try it. You just unscrew it, just screw it in. It. And if you don't like it, ah, oh, that didn't work for me. Put it back. Yeah, it's it's really clever. I I want to live with one for a while because I it, had I had a jazz master made by Carmine Street Guitars. Which they normally make tellies, but it, mm-hmm. I just really wanted a jazz master. And so for my 30th birthday, my family went all together and got this thing for me. And I'd never lived with a standard jazz master system. Right. I'd only had the masteries. And so oh, okay. and so I was like, I, I want to live with the normal one and see what, what it's all about. And I'm like, oh, I sure wish I didn't do that. Um, it, it's the ch- Admittedly, it's the cheaper one. Like mm-hmm. the more generic parts one, so maybe an official Fender one would be better. But huh. I don't love it. I, I'm, I wish it had something else. So I'm gonna try the Halon on there just, just to see. Cause I mean that sounds. Yeah. People are so smart. <laughs> so smart. I wish I was that smart. I'm so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things too. You see it and you're like, well, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Like, like how <laughs> how has it taken this long? Yeah. Why Why didn't Leo think of that? He was so like he's a genius, obviously. But I'm yeah. like, that that is better. You yeah. Know? I um I've got a I'm working on a video with. Do you know Zach Childs? I why do I I do know the name YouTube. Okay. He knows like everything there is to know about telecasters oh yes 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 yes, 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 super cool guy yeah awesome Mm -hmm. um we're working on a video about tellies i want to do one called everything wrong with the telecaster oh which people will be upset but it's just all the things that leo changed like he only changed it if he thought it could be better or something Mm -hmm. was wrong and then um i sweetwater let me get a asat okay for the video and i'm like oh because it's got like these giant again p90 they're not p90s they're like the leo's wide range pickups i can't remember what he called them. i know what you're talking about but there's I some, can't remember some either. weird name for him but um it's awesome I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like oh these are cool i mean they're like you know a little ugly but <laughs> but they sound really good it's one of those things too like if if for some reason say the asat came first mm-hmm. and that's what we grew up seeing yeah would we think it was ugly Probably not. Probably not. Probably like, this yeah. is this weird plank of wood. What's a Telecaster? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's, um, it's like, I mean, just P90s in general. I used to hate the way that I'm like, P90s and a Les Paul is the ugliest thing. Oh, you didn't like it. I hated it forever. And then one day I was just like, I really want a gold top with P90s in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, it's amazing. I love them. <laughs> I, I've always loved aesthetically the P90s and a gold top. I think that's just like... It's just classy. It, I like humbuckers, generally speaking, in Les Pauls, but something about a gold top to me looks better with P90s. Yeah, really? I don't care for like deluxes with the mini humbuckers in there. I still I'm don't. D- I think I'm just a Les Paul sucker, and if it says Les Paul, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, in. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, I'm in. I like it all. Yeah, <laughs> specials, deluxes, whatever. Give it yeah. all to me. I love them. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take them off. Yeah, send them. Yes, yes, more please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The um. Well then, okay. 
So, question for you. Okay. Pit guard on or off on a last ball? I know this is controversial. It it is. It and is. Um, I'm not saying that everything hinges on if I delete all this footage or not. Okay. I just need to know the answer. To all this. right. Let me tell you this, and I, I don't want you to think that I'm being like weak of constitution when I say this. Okay. Hello there. I'd like to introduce you to your new best friend, the Chase Bliss Audio Lossy. Lossy is a collaboration between Chase Bliss and Good Hertz. It's meant to give you some control over those weird digital artifacts that come with every compressed audio. You're hearing it right now. All the changes that are taking place are strictly coming from my playing dynamics. I'm just interacting with the pedal and letting it do its thing. And some true stereo goodness. If you'd like some more details about Lossy, I invite you to head over to chaseflintsaudio.com. What's up, everybody? I am Finn McKenty, host of the Punk Rock NBA podcast, part of the Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. My podcast is all about doing what you love for a living, and every week I sit down and talk to people who have done exactly that. For example, musicians like Tommy from Between the Buried Me, Matt from Periphery, Lil Lotus and Shinigami, among many others, photographers, artists, designers, YouTubers like Glenn Fricker and Sarah Dietschy, and I unpack exactly how they got to where they are today with the goal of helping you do the same. So if that sounds cool, you can listen and subscribe at SoundTalentMedia.com, and I'll see you there. Hey everyone, it's Chris Pandolfi inviting you to check out the new season of my podcast, Inside the Musician's Brain, with new episodes airing now. Hearing it in that room, these guys playing this thing and trying to figure out how to play this song was mind-blowing. It's so inspiring to know there's so much more to it than you ever thought, and it just opened another door. But when people find faith because they need to, in terms of just filling a void to feel better without actually being better, that's when it becomes... A crutch much like you know, drugs and alcohol do. Man, I don't have all the time in the world here. If I want to be a professional bluegrass musician, I felt like I had to take a very like strategic approach, just trying to get rid of the barriers and, and figure out what those barriers were. The feelings still come and I have to reckon with that, but I think I have better ways of moving forward and not being stuck, which I think was the killer for me. Catch all that and so much more on the new season of Inside the Musician's Brain. Yes. I'm out of here. I like I like them both. I like them both. Uh, I like them both. <laughs> it just depends on the guitar. Like on a custom, I think yes. But mm-hmm. on like a special, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um I I, don't, I I like black Les Pauls without the pit guard on them. Mm-hmm. But to me like on my KM I don't know where is it? Oh, it's right there. Like it just the the faded kind of like grungy looking plastics on it i'm like i don't know i think it looks let's see it, it looks it, cool let's let's take a look yeah so, and this Let is me... the other guitar so the telly and this one are the two main guitars i've been playing which i mean i've had this thing for 11 12 years yeah. whatever it is but i see it and i I'm see like... what you're saying it looks like a lot of brown plastic yeah, yeah. especially maybe but what if that ha- what if those humbuckers were covered would you feel differently because yeah i don't know yeah because I think it's just like a lot, like, this is going to be a weird reference that very few people will get. But I put side pipes on my Camaro, as a, uh, and uh, but it had a chrome strip at the, mm-hmm. at, that went above them. And I was like, if I'm going to put the chrome side pipes on, I have to get rid of that chrome. It's too much. Yeah. So I got rid of the chrome strip and added the chrome side pipes. And I feel like if those were like a faded or like a brushed nickel cover, you it might feel be- differently about the pit guard. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, I, like I said, I'm just like, I don't know. It's It's been together the whole time. I don't want to ever take it apart. No, I get but, it. I get it. But yeah, because I mean, it was like, it was pretty mint when I got it. The only thing it had wrong with it was it had some like 
uh, guitar stand burns. Like whoever sure. hung this had it in a not nitro friendly mm -hmm. case. But where is that? This thing. <laughs> so, so we're just laying guitars willy nilly around Everyone's the studio. Gonna be like, you laid the Les Paul down. I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna step on it. <laughs> but I am, and who knows what could happen? Uh, no, it's um. Yeah, I I know it's a controversial thing. I know Derek very much doesn't like <laughs> doesn't like him. doesn't like him, and I'll pretend to be against him on the internet just to, to be obstinate. <laughs> but like, I don't. I'm just like it depends. Yeah, because yeah. like my special doesn't have one, and I wouldn't put one on it. It would look stupid. But yeah. my custom has one, and I think it looks great. So yeah, I mean my I leave the picker on my gold top. And, and juniors, you gotta have one. Yeah, I couldn't mm -hmm. imagine. How does he Not, feel about a junior? Does he even like juniors? Derek, call me. He's Derek. Who, yeah. who even knows? Who knows what he even likes? He doesn't even know what he likes. <laughs> you know what? Are you going to call him? Let's just... Give him a buzz. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it, folks. <laughs> Will he? What a jerk. Did he ignore you? He's not going to answer. He's got this whole idea for this video he's doing, and he's going to Alana McQuaid, and he's borrowing a, a greenie, Les Paul. Oh, Liam dear. All right, well, he didn't answer you. Maybe he'll answer me. Then we'll really get it, give Probably. it to him. Yeah. He's just going to be like, I don't answer that long hair. <laughs> that, <laughs> that American boy, I don't like him. That, mer that American. Wait. Oh, look, he's calling me. Oh, he is? Okay, here we go. Hello? <laughs> uh, hello? What's going on here? <laughs> Hold it up to the mic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about pick guards on Les Pauls. No. And, <laughs> so, but but here's here's the thing, Les Paul Juniors. How do you feel? Oh man. Like deep thought. Like he's really going for it. Yeah. Well, I don't have a junior, so I don't really know. I feel like I don't hate it because it's different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's flat to the body, right? It mm -hmm. is. I think I think that's part of my thing about it is I don't like the fact that the uh, Les Paul or the Lucille or like 335s are not flat to the body. Mm. Okay. I think okay. that's part of it. All right. We found some common ground here. All right. Yeah. So I, I got to say I'm kind of indifferent because I don't own one, but I don't hate it. Okay. Okay. But you heard it here first. Derek likes Les Pauls with pit guards. To notice that these two wonderful Pauls have no pick guards. Oh, uh, well, you took it off of the greenie? No, it comes that way. Look, the real one. No holes, bud. Wow. Wow. No holes. The way it should be. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later. Later. Yeah, see you guys. Bye. Yeah, see ya. That was a good guest appearance. <laughs> and I like that he was extra confused when I started calling at the same time. <laughs> it's like, they couldn't possibly have joined forces against we me. We are together. So do you feel strongly about it either? Obviously, you've got some pit guarded Les Pauls in here. So. I, no, I mean, like, as a joke to mess with Derek. I don't, I don't <laughs> honestly care at the end of the day. I, see, I like a pit guard for a practical reason, though. Oh, okay. Like, whenever I pick, my fingers hit it. So, like, if I'm playing... Like, my fingers are on it while I'm picking. Right. And if it's not there, it messes my hand up. Okay. Because my fingers are at, are further down. Right. So it's strictly just like... Because you like to... It's like a guide post kind of, yeah, of thing. Yeah, my pinky is almost like anchored right here mm -hmm. a lot when I play it. So if the pick guard's not there, it I've makes actually hold seen, my pick differently. I've seen people do that with anchor their pinky when, when there's no pick guard on the pickup or pickup ring right here yep yeah so i'm like on the corner of the pickup ring mm -hmm. but this stops it so then whenever you drop down like that eighth yep. of an inch or whatever it is i'm just like what's wrong with this les paul uh, <laughs> something's <laughs> happening yeah well i think we got to the bottom of that i think we solved it, that problem and we found some common ground and we did look at you this know, les paul, look the world is coming together <sighs> folks everything's just like good we knew it could we're good <laughs> we're good well, dude, I've already asked you the classic questions. You've been on before, so and we, I, maybe we already answered this question, but I feel like I need to mix it up a little bit before we wrap this episode up. Sure. So, 
now that you're in Nashville, you've been mm-hmm. here for a while now. What is your favorite restaurant? Oh, I'll tell you what. There's a restaurant. It's kind of over in Madison um, called Green Chili. Green if, Chili? If you like like Indian food. Oh, and I do. Oh, it's so... so. There's another place called Cafe Rocca mm-hmm. in Hendersonville. And over in Madison, there's one called Green Chili. And it is the best... I mean, I think it's the best like chicken tiki masala mm-hmm. I've ever had. And what's the bread? Nom? Non bread? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd never had better than what they have. Like Ooh. I could have almost just eaten that. I'm like, this is so good. Okay. Yeah. So I had some friends tell me like, we need to go to Green Chili, and I went there. And I'm like, all right, address saved in my phone. Oh because... man, I got another place to add to my list of Nashville restaurants. Yeah, to try. it's. I mean, it's so good. Or if you want like the the more like. Standard, like I'm, I'm like a sucker for Martins and mm-hmm. and Edleys. I yeah. mean, I, I like all that. It's like you know what I really like at Edleys, like the barbecue is good, mm-hmm. but I prefer Martins if I'm going strictly on the barbecue. Yeah, I love the catfish tacos at Edley. Oh, yeah, catfish tacos at Edley are so good. Yeah. Man, we we get really good fish tacos at man. It was on the lake. Oh, what was it called? Man, I can't remember. If I asked my wife, she would know. I don't know, but they, it was like amazing fish tacos. All right. Like real fit. Like they caught it in mm-hmm. the lake that, oh. you're, that you're eating. They're like, yeah, that's like in the lake here. And like I was just like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you just told so many people. Yeah. But you don't know where. I don't know the restaurant. You don't know the restaurant. Hmm. It's a mystery. I wonder where that restaurant is. I mean, it could be somewhere on a lake. Yeah, I'm just joking. Oh, I remember the name of the restaurant. Um. I don't know about it, catching it in the lake. I was just making that up. Um, <laughs> I, was just, I believed you. you. I was just joking. Um, it's called Rudder. 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 Okay. Yeah, it was cool. It, it, it is on the lake, the restaurant. Mm-hmm. That wasn't a lie. Maybe everything else was. The whole podcast the whole was podcast a lie. The whole podcast was a lie. Wow. But, but yeah, they had the best uh, fish tacos and the worst hamburger I've ever had <laughs> in my entire life. Not a surf and turf spot. No. Um, Again, amazing. And they had um, called like Bang Bang Shrimp. Okay. Really good. Mm -hmm. Fish tacos, really good. Do not get a burger. Don't get the burger at Rudder's. It was charcoal. Like, stick to the fish. Yeah. I I don't know how they're so good at one thing and so bad at the other, but, you know, sorry, Rudder. This episode not sponsored by Rudder, yeah. but, but also kind of? Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just remember the waitress telling me, she's like, how do you want your burger cooked? And usually I'm like, you want a burger cooked all the way through. You know, do you, do you go medium? I, I, I go medium rare. Really? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd always heard. I know you're not supposed to do that, I was but say, I, I always do always heard it. you weren't supposed to because it, a steak is different. Yes. But on burger meat, since it's been exposed to the air and all that kind of stuff. Because it's all mixed together and... You know, there's a potential for, like, the outside of the steak keeps the inside safe. Safe, yes. yeah. And you I, cook the, the outside is the most exposed and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Steak talk. Burger, not the same. Yeah, so I... But I still risk it and go medium. Do you, yeah, yeah, so so I was like, I was like, well, I just want it, like, cooked all the way through. And she's like, you usually want to get it a few steps down mm-hmm. from, like, wherever you want it. She goes, they tend to overcook them. I'm like, well, then medium... And it was like the most well done. Like I couldn't even eat it. I'm like, wow. Like what do I have to do? She like, like new. Like it's gonna be. So you probably should have got it medium rare, and it would have been maybe well done. Yeah. <laughs> like who knows? How do you? But then what if you like it? I mean, you shouldn't eat rare burgers probably. But what if you like it rare? And then you're like, just don't cook it, and then yeah. maybe it'll be medium rare. I don't know. Yeah, I'll tell you, he has good burgers. Sorry, I know this has just turned into a food. Food podcast. Shocking. This has turned into a food podcast yet again. <laughs> I'm so surprised. I um Edley's has oh. a really good smash burger. Okay. I, burgers are like my favorite thing. So I love it's, burgers. It's like my mission to go around to all the burger places in So Nashville. you've been to pharmacy then? I've never been to pharmacy because those are like fancy burgers. They're so good though. Are they uh, Yeah. So I've I've heard everyone say they're good. I'm not into like any kind of fancy burger. I want it to be the most basic, like Five Guys or Joyland. Have you ever? Oh, to Joyland? I love Joyland. Joyland yeah. is the best, straight up just burger. I I'm, love I'm, Joyland. Yeah, yeah, I'm like I don't I don't need any 15 sauces on the burger. I'm like I just want to actually taste the burger. Mm-hmm. And um, Joyland has it. Edley's had like a surprisingly good uh, burger. 
Where else did we just go? We just went axe throwing. Blue, blue buffalo. Blue. I don't know. It was a restaurant attached to this place called Bad Axe. Okay. And um, it was a great burger. I was like not expecting anything, and I'm like, this is a good burger. All right. So I'm with you on the on the burgers. I'm I, as much as I talk about pizza, I have a deep love for burgers. But I'm I'm like very mood based with it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, give me the one with the hatch chilies and all this fancy stuff, and like get crazy with it. Sometimes I'm like. Give me that diner special. Yeah, you know that's what I want. Yeah, I like I have I like both, but it just depends mm-hmm. on how I'm feeling at the moment. So, do you have a, what's your favorite pizza place here? Everyone says Five Points. Five is Points good. is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I that's a that's a good like crowd pleasing like you can't go wrong with mm-hmm. Five Points. I haven't scoped out the pizza sit. I've heard I haven't not been yet. I don't know if I'm going to get to today or tomorrow. I'm hoping to, I'm trying to get to tomorrow's a little bit up in the air. Mm-hmm. But I've heard Pinky Rings really good. Um, oh, I haven't heard. But of I've that. never, never been there. Um, I think it's in Madison too, if I remember correctly. Is it? Don't quote me on that. But I, Pinky Ring Nashville, it'll tell you. Yeah, um, I've heard that's really good. Uh, but there's a place called Bella Napoli mm. uh, in town that has uh, they're 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 Italian like wood fired restaurant. Oh, cool. And their pizza is really good. They have a, a four cheese. One that's so intense, that's so, so delicious. So with pizza, are you kind of like you just want plain, simple? Well, that's how I gauge a place. Yeah, like, that's how I'm like, how good are you? How good is your cheese slice? Yeah, but, but not necessarily. I'll go crazy with toppings. Yeah. Do you have a favorite kind? Are you like more New York? I Chicago, that's my go-to. New York, like New York style is my go-to. Mm-hmm. I love like Italian wood-fired style ones when they're done mm-hmm. well too. Um, and this place does a really good job. They also have, and I'm not even a big lasagna guy. Like, I like it, mm-hmm. but my wife loves lasagna. She'll order it everywhere, anywhere. But this place, Bella Napoli's lasagna. Really? Is incredible. Man. Yeah. Absolutely. If you go there, my suggestion is to get one person, whatever, whoever's in the mood for what, one person get the lasagna, mm-hmm. one person get the Quattro Formaggi pizza, maybe share a little bit. You'll be happy. Do you have you heard of place bricks? Bricks. I don't know bricks. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's, they. It's all wood fired mm-hmm. like that. Some of the pizzas haven't been the best, but they have like a barbecue chicken pizza. Mm-hmm. That's. I'm, I'm. I can get down on a barbecue chicken pizza, but if it's like, let's say you're at a party and there's a bunch of pizzas there, it's yeah. The last one I'm gonna. Grab. You're, you're like it's. It's not that I don't like it, but I'm like, well. <laughs> it's, I feel is it, a, is it pizza? Because I feel the same way about it that I feel about like taco pizzas. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like I if I wanted barbecue chicken I would get barbecue chicken yeah if I wanted a taco I would get a taco I want don't pizza. put it on the pizza <laughs> yeah but this but it's not that I don't like it it's not that it's not good because they're both good mm-hmm. it's just if I'm in the mood for pizza I want pizza uh, yeah I guess there's typically not actual like marinara sauce Mm-mm. on there it's always replaced with the barbecue yeah because it might be weird with marinara yeah I think maybe I don't know I don't know, sauces they don't get along. <laughs> And with that, uh, I think we're going to wrap this up. What do you nice. think? Nice. Yeah. I like it. We got lost in the sauce, folks. Hey, that's, just, that's what happens. That's right. Talking pizza. <laughs> All right, good people. There you go. There's another episode in the can. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you check out the previous episode with Robert and you go check out his YouTube channel because it is honestly fan freaking tastic. I love it. He kills it. And he's also a very good teacher. So if you want to learn from him, he's got educational material available as well. Check out Robert Baker everywhere you get guitar internet stuff. And if you would like more chat, if you would like more bonus episode type stuff, go over to tonemob.com slash Patreon, where for five bucks a month, you can get access to the bonus episodes. Now this week's a little different. And if you want to find out what that means, you're going to have to go over there and check it out. And I thank you very much to everyone who has done that. It is a massive, massive help. It really, really helps keep this thing going. And I appreciate you all very, very much. All right. I got to go. I am. uh, Keep hoping for a break. My birthday's coming up. Maybe I'll get a break then. I don't know. I don't know. It's all good stuff. Thank you all for keeping me busy. I'll talk to you on the Internet very soon. Bye bye. One last thing before we totally sign off here. I just want to remind you that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy Guitar Strings made in Nashville, that will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company, and I really do think they're making the best products on the market. 
So if you would like to try custom strings, go to tonemob.com slash stringjoy and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things. And by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is tonemob.com slash stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website, and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple, and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstreet as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got... Three different guitars that now have Gun Street harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunStreetWiringShop.com and check them out. Hello out there! Hi, I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McLean. We want to tell you about our podcast, None But the Brave, which is dedicated to taking a deep dive into the work of Bruce Springsteen. We're currently in our fifth season. Our latest episodes focus heavily on Bruce's 2024 tour and have featured such guests as Anthony Castrovince from MLB Network and Barstool's Kirk Minahan. We're also covering the 40th anniversary of Bruce's biggest record, Born in the USA. And as part of that, coming up this week, Uproxx cultural critic Stephen Hyden returns to the show for a fascinating hour-long conversation about his new book. There was nothing you could do. Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA and the End of the Heartland. To listen, you can go to our website, mbtbpodcast.com, or subscribe on your preferred podcasting platform. We hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you. I don't think it overstates things to say that the Beatles were the greatest gift to entertainment and culture of our time, a secular religion, if you will, with their universal appeal and demonstrable impact on people's lives. I'm Robert Rodriguez, host of Something About the Beatles. With every episode, I speak with historians, musicians, artists, and Beatle witnesses, all in the service of fresh insights into the most joyous cultural entity the world has ever known. I hope you'll join me and listen to something about the Beatles, now at Evergreen, and wherever you get your podcasts.